In this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through a full day of training. Tomorrow morning, I have a speed workout programmed, my first one back since my 100K race. We have some 400 meter repeats. And then in the evening, I have a lower body strength session with some deadlifts and squats. A typical week of training for me looks like six days of running and four days of lifting. About 70 to 80% of my miles are easy or zone two miles. And then the other 20 to 30% are higher intensity, lactate threshold or VO2 max miles. For lifting, I do two lower body sessions, two upper body sessions. And if I have time, I'll add in one full body session as well. Before we get into the training portion of this video, I wanna do a quick recap from my 100K race, which I just did about 10 days ago, specifically diving into the data that my watch pulled, which we can use to help judge our recovery to ease back into training, as well as viewing my fitness from my macro perspective. So as I'm recording this about 10 days ago on December 2nd, I completed the longest race of my life. It was originally supposed to be the Brazos Bend 100K ultra marathon. The race got canceled. Instead, we pivoted and held our own race in a church parking lot up in Dallas, Texas. So the course ended up being a one mile concrete loop that I completed 62 times, 62 miles. It took nine hours and 36 minutes to complete. It was definitely a challenge both mentally and physically, but we got it done. And honestly, one of the best parts was we had over a hundred people show up to run a one mile concrete loop in a parking lot on short notice. There's a whole video on it documenting the day on my channel you guys can go check out. But what I wanna dive into specifically in this video is the data that my watch pulled from the race itself. I think data is super, super important. Yes, you can give too much power to data, but if used properly, it can help you recover, perform, and build fitness in a really efficient way. So for this race, I wore the Koros Apex 2 Pro. I've had this watch for a while. I really love it. The Koros app that pairs with the watch is amazing. I'm here in the training hub on my phone right now, and I'll kind of walk you guys through some of the data that my watch pulled from the race. So as you can see, we had 62 miles. Activity time was nine hours, 36 seconds. Average pace was 9.17 per minute. My average heart rate for the whole race was 154 beats per minute. This is exactly where I wanted to be. This stat blew my mind. I burned almost 8,000 calories, uh, 7,680. And then if we go back to the main menu here, we can scroll down and click on my training status. And my base fitness has definitely gone down since the race, just cause it's been about 10 days. I haven't ran a whole lot since then. So it's down to 90. But as you can see, we can scroll through and on December 2nd, my base fitness was at 105, which was the peak over the last month. Another cool feature I wanna show you guys here is the recovery status on the Koros. So if we scroll here on December 1st, the day before the race, my recovery was 100%. I'm ready to go, ready to race. And then the day of the race, we dipped down to 14% because we just depleted our bodies. The next day, back up to 52 back up to 79. And then on that third day after the race, we're back up to 100% ready to start training again. And I'll tell you, this was pretty much spot on with how I felt. By that next Tuesday, the third day after the race, I was ready to run again. But the correlation between what the watch is telling me and how I feel is honestly very, very accurate. So that's a quick recap and data overview from my watch and the 100K race. Tomorrow morning, we've got our first speed workout back. The first speed workout I've done in almost two months since the Chicago Marathon. So we'll see you guys there. Just finishing up my warm up miles. We just got here to the track. This morning's workout is two mile easy warm up, and then we have eight times 400 meter sprints, somewhere between 5 to 5.30 pace with a one minute 
walking, rest in between, and then a two mile cool down. This is my first time doing speed workout in about two months. So it's been a minute. I'm excited to see what the legs have in them today. I'm gonna start incorporating weekly speed workouts again starting today. So let's see what we got. Definitely came out too hot on that one. <laughs> I was ripping like 450 pace. And the last 100 meters, I had to slow down. I think I hit like 5.11 pace. The legs still got it. Let's see what we can do these next seven reps. All right, we're feeling good. We're hitting sub 510 pace. Feeling good, I miss, I miss these speed workouts. Okay, last interval. Eight out of eight, here we go. See if I can break five minute pace on this one. See what we can do. Oh my goodness, 452 for the last rep. That was a good one. That was a good one. It's been a minute since we got the heart rate up like that. It felt good though. Great workout this morning. We'll see you guys back at home. All right, it is time for our evening lift. We've got a lower body session. We've got some deadlifts, some squats, some accessory movements. It's gonna be a great workout. And before we work out, I'm going to do a scoop of switchback electrolytes. These are actually sample tubs. These are new flavors that we are currently sampling. Right now we have two flavors, Orange Dream and Mixed Berry, but we're gonna be adding a new flavor in early 2024. So we are trying to nail down the flavor we want. As you can see, they are blurred out because we don't wanna announce it quite yet. But tonight I'm gonna to use... Ooh, this one smells really good. Hmm, I wish I could tell you what it is, but you're just gonna to have to find out in early 2024. That taste is good. It's a hard decision to make. All four of these have been solid flavors, but we gotta pick just one. All right, let's head out to the garage and we'll start our leg workout. Before we get into this lift, I wanna take a quick second to talk about these shorts right here. These are the 10,000 interval shorts, and I absolutely love them. I've been wearing them for a lot of my lifts lately. They're super comfy, they're lightweight, they're nice and stretchy. One of my favorite parts is this liner that they have in them. There's also a slot for your phone over here in the liner. There's two big front pockets. There's a zipper pocket here on the side if you need to hold anything valuable. Really, they're just super comfortable. You can tell that they're very high quality. You can lift in them, you can run in them, you can do yoga, you can mow the lawn. They are super, super versatile. If you have not yet tried out the 10,000 interval shorts, I highly recommend it. You can go to 10,000.cc. I'll put the link down in the description. You can use my code jmiller for 15% off your order. Again, highly recommend the 10,000 interval shorts. I have been super, super happy with these things. So because I just had a race last week and I'm now easing back into strength training, the weights are just a little bit lower. And I think my strength coach might've been a little angry when he programmed today's workout because we only have one set of deadlifts, but it is a set of 20 reps. 20 reps, we'll see how this goes. As you guys know, before I get into my working sets, I like to do a little band warm up. So I'll just whip through this real quickly. Before I 
get up to my first working sets, I always like to do a few warm up sets. And one thing I really like to practice during these warm up sets is to pretend like I have a lot of weight on the bar and try and work through those reps as if I had a lot of weight on the bar. So the form, the timing, everything is exactly the same, whether I'm doing 135 pounds or 400 pounds. All right, we've got 275 pounds on the bar. Not super heavy compared to what I've been doing, but we have 20 reps. I've never done more than like 10 reps in a set, so <laughs> this could get very, very interesting. Uh, we'll see how this goes, but I'm just gonna do it slow and steady and uh, just get them all in. So here we go, 20 reps. Way, baby. Last one. <sighs> yeah, I've been dreading that all week. Thinking about it every day. Twenty reps set. That was hard, but. We did her. Got her done. Oh, all right. That definitely sucked. But fortunately, that was our only set of deadlifts for today. Now, on to squats. All right, I've got a little hack for you guys. If you have terrible ankle mobility like me and you struggle to get depth on your squat and get low enough like me, take some plates. These are just 10 pound plates, these are about one to two inches thick. Place them behind you. Just put your heels up on the plates. And when you squat, you can get a lot deeper uh, and you don't have to use as much ankle mobility. All right, we've got a set of 10 here. This is 155 pounds. another set of 10 and then that's it for squats. <clears throat> All right, we are on to pull-ups. We are doing weighted pull-ups today. I recently got this dip belt and it allows you to strap up a plate, which is perfect for doing weighted pull-ups. So I must have made my coach mad or something because today I have three sets of max rep pull-ups with a 25 pound plate. So don't know, I've never done this. I'm doing a lot of new stuff today. So we'll see uh, how many reps we get in. <clears throat> Five pound plate, not bad, not bad. Now I know you might be asking, Jeremy, I thought this was a lower body workout. Why are you doing pull-ups? Let me tell you. I've had this goal to deadlift 500 pounds and run a sub five mile in the same day for years. And I've slowly been working on it, kind of just in between races, always had this goal in the back of my head, but I've never actually dedicated the time and energy that is required to hit a goal as big as this one. So a few months ago, I started working with a strength coach. His name is Pete Rubish. He is an elite level power lifter. He has like a 900 plus pound deadlift PR, and he's been helping me to get my deadlift up. And in the process, I've PR my deadlift. So a few weeks ago, I hit 455 pounds and it felt relatively easy. And I'm obviously continuing to run a lot, building up my speed. And I know that I can run a sub five mile. I've done it in the past, but the big challenge is gonna be to combine them, get the deadlift up, to 500 pounds 
and run the sub five mile in the same day. So the ultimate goal is by the end of 2024, within the next two to three weeks, to attempt the 500 pound deadlift and the sub five mile in the same day. So I'm gonna keep documenting this process and hopefully we can accomplish this big goal by the end of the year, but we're just gonna keep working at it and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the final exercise of the evening is some Bulgarian split squats. I always like to finish my lower body days with a good single leg accessory movement like Bulgarian split squats. So I'm gonna do three sets of eight on each leg here. And that's the workout, that's the video, that is a full day of training. We had the track workout this morning, some 400 meter repeats, and tonight we had a big leg session. We're still kind of recovering from the 100K race about 10 days ago, but we are now working towards some other big, big fitness goals. So I'm gonna keep documenting this journey, keep showing you guys the process, and I hope you continue to follow along. But hope you guys got something out of this video, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.